Hello YouTubers, uh, it's Richard again. Um, after uh, doing the first review of this meter uh, several weeks ago when I bought it and, and received it, uh, I've been using it now for some time and uh, a friend of mine has been using it for a few days who gave me some really good advice. Um, now I must say my friend speciality, it's his work, he's an RF engineer um, he's working with Bluetooth and Wi-Fi and all that kind of stuff. So he's used to um, having capacitors and, and coils in the Pico range and smaller. So he wanted to check if this meter would be usable for that. Well, at the edge of the spec, capacitors is okay. He wants to have an even more accurate way for the coils to measure. This goes up to... I think it was one nano Henry and he wants even more accurate, which is in Wi-Fi and Bluetooth world. It's it's daily common it's common, you know. For me, I'm just a simple electronic enthusiast who likes to fumble around with radios and transmitters, just normal HF stuff up to 50 megahertz, maybe. 144, 2 meters, 70 centimeters, stuff like that. For me, this is more than accurate enough. Um, but um, I've discovered in the last few weeks uh, a few problems with it. And uh, I want to let you know about this because this could be a deal breaker for you. I'll let be, you be the judge of that. And the first thing is the battery use of this thing. You may have guessed it because I have it in the battery scale mode where it tells you the internal voltage of the rechargeable battery which is delivered with it. And there are a few things which I noticed and, and which you may think uh, 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 rethink uh, also in first thing is it has a nickel metal hydride rechargeable battery no lithium ion. I mean, come on, man, it's 2021. What world are we living in? Is this 1998? I mean, it could be even worse. It could be a NICAT, but it's a nickel metal hydride. Now, if the battery use would be very low on this thing, I could still say, well, that's okay. You have these nickel metal hydride nowadays which act like an alkaline. They have a very low self, uh, self uh, leakage. So they last for a long time. The meter itself uses quite some power when you use it. It has a built-in oscillator. So don't expect to be working for days and days and days on one battery. It just won't happen. Even if it would have a lithium ion battery in it, you won't be able to work for days and days and days on it. The consumption of meters like these is just too high. That's no problem. What is a problem is the use in standby. If you switch this thing off, like that, it's a soft off. There is some standby use. And the 879 has a specification of one to two microamps, which is very nice. It means that with a, charge, a rechargeable battery in it or with an alkaline, you could put it in a closet, take it out one year later, and it still would have enough battery charge to use it. It would probably eat the battery in something like one and a half, two years, maybe three years, maybe even longer. This one has a specification of 11 microamps which is already a, on the edge of being bearable. Uh, it would mean if you go from the idea that a nine volt battery has about 200, 300, 400, maybe 500 milliamps hours of capacity, and the rechargeable in this one is 250, I think, um, you would have a standby battery use of about a year which is okay-ish, I would say, tolerable. But the practical situation is that I measured this thing with a Fluke 87 in the microamp range. It uses 50 to 60 microamps in standby, which is 
ridiculously high and basically just means that it without using it it drains the battery within weeks and that would mean that whenever you put this into the closet you will have to take out the battery because if you forget about it for one two or three months you will drain the battery completely after which it may start leaking in your device and then you know what happens this will end up in the scrapyard because once you get battery leakage this uh, what is it it's uh, caustic stuff which is in there if that gets into the traces and the electronics it's just the meter is done so my projected lifespan of this thing with this battery situation is that a lot of these meters will end up in the junk and in the scrapyard the only way to get around that is doing two things either take the battery out and always use the meter with an adapter with with the 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 power uh, the wall ward you get with it which defeats more or less the prob the, the the whole point of having a handheld meter in your hand you would always need an outlet nearby to power the meter the other solution would be to drill a hole somewhere in the case and put a real hardware on off switch in it I've contacted BK Precision with this problem and asked them what they thought about it and according to BK Precision having a five times so that's 500% higher battery use than specificated is no problem it is in the range of what is to be expected yeah well what are you going to do with that you know I can conclude uh, several things from it they didn't tell me but one of my conclusions would be if you really can't specificate that these meters use 11 microamps and all of them do it just means you're building poor equipment you're very poor at building reliable equipment because if one meter uses 50 microamps the next one will also and the other one will also and the third and the fourth and the fifth and the sixth if that is not the case it just means you're not capable of having your production on a stable on a stable level and all the meters are different this means it boils down to luck whether you get a good one or you get a bad one i'll let you be the judge of which is which is the problem the other possibility is that they're just lying in their specs they know this thing is a battery hawk and they just put some fictional number in the specs like oh let's put 11 microamps there that seems decent and if people complain we can tell them well it's 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 in the region of of what is specificated so we don't see a problem with it and that's exactly the answer what i got from bk precision uh, this gentleman who wrote me an email back said they don't see any problem with it and it is more or less in the range of what is to be expected of a meter like this yeah well okay that's that so i'll let you be the judge of that if that will be a deal breaker for you to buy this thing have in mind that also the last few years there has been a little change on this hardware market and there is a new contender in town or contester in town to measure uh, coils inductors and capacitors and that is this little guy the nano vna which is more than capable of making those measurements it's just not as easy as a dedicated LCR meter. You have to put in a little bit of work to get the same values, but in the end you will get there. You will again have the same accurate results as this meter can. And then knowing that this, the price of this is about $50, $60, and that I paid some $400 for it, 
or in euros in 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 europe this thing costs well over 500 euros so i bought it in the usa and had it shipped over which is still cheaper than buying it in europe but it's it's in the region of still in the region of 400 euros which is quite a lot of money for a meter but okay so um the next problem i encountered with this thing which is not a real problem but shows you that with meters like this you're really on the edge of what is possible in a handheld device with this tweezer design and the problem with this tweezer design is that it's very difficult to get the correct tension on your part and to have a stable measurement now this is for a part overcome by the fact that bk precision made a little catch in here so if you push the tweezers here until they are completely locked together you always would have the same measuring pressure on your tweezer points sort of and it works sort of but it's it's okay it's okay um maybe the quality of the gold on this has a little bit of effect on it because it looks like gold i'm wondering how thick that is and what quality of it is but you can have depending on how hard you squeeze on these tweezers or not you will have different results so if we power it up I will make the settings as I'm used to by now. So that means I will put the level to one volt, put the frequency to a hundred kilohertz, which means you get the highest accuracy in picofarads. So you, and if you would squeeze it now uncalibrated, you would see that well, you can do it in resistance. Let's do it in resistance. Uh, so that's the primary resistance. And you will see this is uncalibrated that there is quite some, if I calibrate it, short, then open, calibration. You will see that the 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 uh, the way it measures depends on how hard you squeeze it if you squeeze it very lightly and you can see these numbers rolling around you know so and it even fails at some point there it's back again this is not so uh, 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 well uh, made um, and it's a problem the 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 original idea of this is that no matter how hard you push it or not would give the same result the fact of life is it doesn't you know and you can see this here at some point it will stabilize but it's difficult to get an accurate result if we go back to the um, to the capacitance measurement there is a second problem and that is the meter doesn't have a zero function or a relative function where you can zero the meter out the 879 model does have a zero function but doesn't have the calibration option this one has the calibration option but it doesn't have the zero and what this means is this so i mean the most accurate scale for capacitance and i'm calibrating the meter it's in open state so i press cal it says open so when i close it now it says short i push the calibration button again and it's calibrated now what the problem is you can see here there is some residual capacitance and if I open up the tweezers, it becomes less. And if I close the tweezers, it becomes more. So without the tweezers touching each other, I'm building up capacitance. I would like to zero this out now. 
because if I will stack in a very small SMD part in there, this distance will affect my measurement. So then you would say, well, that means that you will have to calibrate it with the tweezers almost together. Yeah, well, that's a nice, nice thought, but it's, it's very difficult to do that. So you can get something like this. I would close them almost. So like this, then push cal. It has an open calibration now. Now I would close it and it should auto detect to short and it doesn't. So I waited too long. That, that, that is one part of the problem. So close it again, almost closed. Calibrate, open, close it. Now it does a short. Push the button again and it has set the calibration. And now it's at the minus value. So if I close it now, I should get it close to zero at the distance. So you could do this calibration by, for instance, putting a piece of plastic, the size of your SMD component in between and do the open calibration like that with a small piece of plastic in between, which is, uh, it's not the same as having an air gap in between, but it helps. So you can then get the practice like this. I do a calibration. This is the open. Take it out, do the short push the calibration button and it saved the value. And if I would put this in between, I will get a value. Well, it's not close to zero. It's absolutely not close to zero. And it should be to zero. So there's some fumbling around with this, you know, and this shows you about what you can expect of the accuracy of measuring with this. The meter itself is, has no problem of doing it. It's this, you need a more accurate measuring set of tweezers or a different device for that to make this kind of accuracy in your measurement. So basically the end of the specs of the meter is really the end of the specs you may expect to get from it. And even less actually, the meter is more capable than the tweezers are. I know there are, but these are for the bench meter. There are SMD devices to stick in very small SMD parts. And then you get to the point that only these, this adapter will set you back a thousand dollars or something like that. So beware of trying to measure very small components with this. You just may up getting frustrated because you know it's possible but it will be very difficult to maintain this distance while doing a calibration. Here you can see so there it's about a zero now. That's just about it. Um, anytime soon now I will make a new video with all these things incorporated and I will delete the old ones. For now you will have to do it with this. I hope you're informed and uh, will help you a little bit better in making a decision whether this is the right thing for you. Have a nice evening further and uh, bye bye.